you are in for a prophetic series with me and in this one i'm going to show you how that the prophetic calling makes you a billionaire positions you to become a billionaire i'm going to be touching uh, a number of points that brings us to that conclusion in scripture and i'm going to be unraveling the secrets behind them in such a way that you catch the fire to become a billionaire yourself let's uh, talk about prophets like Abraham, uh, Joseph, David, Isaiah, Elijah, Elisha. All of these men had the capacity to multiply a word, create a word, command wealth, and the likes. So in today's uh, generation and time, or the contemporary time, I want to coach you how to Step in the shoes of these prophets and to explore your prophetic ability, your prophetic grace, your prophetic anointing, and in the process and over time, be able to walk yourself into the hall of billionaires, kingdom billionaires. I mean. And I want you to stick with me to the end so we can come to that conclusion. Now, let me highlight the points that makes it clear that their prophetic calling makes you or positions you to become a billionaire. In scripture, the first prophet God made uh, known to us openly by himself in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 7 was, or uh, is by the name Abraham. His was a calling into abundance. He had got a prophetic call according to Genesis chapter 12, and God said, I'm taking you to a land that I will show you. And he said, in blessing, I'll bless you. In multiplying, I'll multiply you. And I'll make your name famous. The theme behind Abraham's call was that into abundance. He was called to enjoy God's abundance. We saw that manifest, full-fledged, in Genesis chapter 13, from verse 1. We are the men, Abraham, retained from Egypt. And the Bible said that he was very rich in gold and in silver and in livestock and had a lot of male servants and uh, maids, that's female servants. A point I want you to get here is that the man Abraham had the ability to connect with God directly. God spoke with him. God instructed him. The man moved according to the instruction of God uh, to Canaan land. In Canaan land, God allotted his life when he left Canaan land for Egypt uh, upon the incidents of the famine. God followed him up as a prophet and brought him back, instructed him to come back. What a prophet enjoys is to hear directly from God, uh, dictates of God, either for their own personal life or for the lives of the people to whom they have been sent. Abraham enjoyed this privilege as a prophet and for the fact that God categorically referred to him as a prophet, he said, that the man Abraham is a prophet in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 7 makes it clear that you can't mind word about this man. He was a prophet and he was called into abundance. So there are some prophetic calling that are an outright calling into the life of abundance. It doesn't matter where you step from. I have listened to Prophet Shepherd Bishuri on several occasions saying that God said, go and show the world that I got up. And he said, God said, I should go and display wealth. Let the church know, let the world know that the people of God can be this rich and be righteous and holy. And so the man, Prophet Shepherd Bishuri, major one, came in became stupidly rich in a very young age. He, he managed to make it clear that wealth has got no business 
with the interfering with his depth of relationship with God. So he dubs as the world's richest prophet at a point, and at the same time, one of the sharpest prophets ever on the planet. At so this man is called into abundance, like our father Abraham. So there are some of you out there that your prophetic mission is that into abundance. When God told Abraham that I will, through your descendants, bless the families of the earth or the descendants or the people of all nations of the earth, in your seats shall all, or in your descendants shall all, the families of the earth or the people of the earth be blessed. Nobody complains about that. But when a prophet comes up today, like Prophet Shiva and tells us that God says, go show the world that I am, somebody, you know, you're going to say, ah, oh, should prophets be these rich or that? Put that aside, that scripture, the same thing God said to Abraham, it's the same thing God put onto or put across to Prophet Shiva in a different language. The same thing. So it's a call into abundance. I know that by functionality, the man Abraham who was in the office of faith, a prophet in the office of faith, but the theme of his calling is a call into abundance. If you don't know this, you can't ask God for it. And if you don't ask God for it, you ain't going to see it happen. The next way the prophetic calling makes billionaires. We're going to be picking the example of Joseph. And this is serve a money spinning problem. Joseph was anointed as a prophet of God in Egypt. His special area was in interpretation of dreams as well as his ability to predict the future with precision and accuracy, with discretion. So you see that he did ju just that job for Pharaoh and was placed in the highest seat of power next to Pharaoh in Egypt. If that was a company, he was the CEO of the company in Ixens. And that positioned him to be uh, one of the highest salary earners or the highest salary earner on earth. That was, if Egypt was a company, then it was the richest company in the world during the time of that famine that Joseph was uh, lifted to manage the wealth of Egypt. The man, and that was his company that he had built, the same ability that he used to predict the future with accuracy and precision, he would have also used to predict the future of economy with accuracy and precision for himself. So when prophets build company, if you are a prophet and you're building the company, please try to tap into your prophetic ability to run your company. That way you can build a multi-billion dollar company by the leading of the Holy Spirit. You can prophesy yourself into becoming a billionaire. So some calling, with a picture of the man Joseph, it's important for you as a prophet to not only develop your prophetic ability, try to grow to become a good prophet, uh, in order to be able to prophesy to people alone, but also to look at how to build your world. Prophets are not necessarily people who wait for churches or ministries to uh, build their phone in terms of maybe they give you a salary or stipend or uh, rewards or remuneration. No, not necessarily so. But the word still says that you don't muzzle the mouth of the ass that treats the corn. So, and that a laborer is worthy of his pay. So I'm not trying to say that if somebody is serving in a house of God, he or she uh, shouldn't be compensated or given stipend or salary. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say here is that as a prophetic person that you are, you should be able to build your prophetic ability to the point where you can now begin to control your businesses prophetically. This again, uh, I want to bring to mind the likes of Prophet Shepard Bushir, who talks about forex trading. 
He said, in Forex, one of the things that he does, not just engaging the candlesticks, when I studied his uh, work on uh, Forex trading, he said that it doesn't just engage the candlestick uh, a tool for uh, Forex trading like every other person does. He says, the Spirit of God gives him revelations relating to the appropriate uh, movement of the market, not minding what others are seeing. And he says he takes such positions and he comes back with great results. That's like when it's time to buy or sell and he does the right thing there and comes back with great result. So as a prophetic person, it should be in you to ask God for something like this. Like I did say it about Joseph, how we eat, that the man Joseph was called or had the prophetic calling that had got the theme of solving money spinning problem. problem. And with that, he solved a money spinning problem. And it gave him access to come to the place where he sat and uh, presided over billions. Whatever can make you preside over the billions of others, being accountable can also make you to be able to build your own billions and still be accountable. That's why Jesus said that who will give you your own wealth if you cannot manage what belongs to another. You manage appropriately, properly, what belongs to another, then yours will be given to you with ease. The third example I want to look at is the man by the name Prophet Elisha. His was a call to fix economic problems with a supernatural command. That he got a supernatural command over economy. And he fixed the economy of Israel, engaging in this prophetic ability in him. We saw that the nation of Israel was under famine for whatever reason. In fact, in most cases, when famine comes in, it's either the people offend God or something. You see that. But because he's a prophet and was in touch with the mind of God, he also was able to interrupt the famine with a prophetic utterance that was tapped directly from the throne room of God. So I should, as a prophet, be able to fix monetary problems or issues of economy supernaturally. And this happens gradually as you're growing in your prophetic ability. And as God begins to develop in the place of character, he begins to set more authority to you so that you can speak these things and they come to be as if they are mortal words or unstoppable words. Say, so tomorrow at about this time, there was surplus in the land according to his prophecy. He fixed it. He rewrote the story of the economic circumstance of Israel at the material instance. That's the man, prophet Elisha. So if you've got the measure of the uh, anointing of the prophet Elisha, in which you can solve civic problems like prophet Elisha, people have got civic problems. They come to meet him and you're able to solve them. Like the issue of the woman who had creditors coming to pick up uh, two kids uh, or sons and she ran to the prophet and Elisha was able to fix that. The Shunammite woman, who was bearing in the prophet Elisha was able to fix that. And the issue of the ambushing of the people of Israel, that the prophet Elisha played the role of gossip there. The same abilities, if you're beginning to notice that as a prophet, you've got all of these, try to also interplay with your personal issues so that you can boost national economy, boost continental economy, boost international economy, or the global economy, 
with a supernatural command. That's who prophets are. I want you to get this. You shouldn't attempt to sap people, make people. No. The pocket of the people is not where your wealth is. So when your eyes are truly focused on God and his ability as a prophet and you are developing your relationship with God into an in-depth uh, form so that you become a concretely established as a prophet, you discover that it becomes easy for you to commend wealth. Remember that wealth accumulation is over time. Building these things is over time. Financial intelligence is important and a host of others. Some prophets have got a lot of access to wealth, but they've not been able to manage those. And so they end up with a poverty, a lot of money, because money itself is not even the wealth we're talking about, but the ability to uh, interact with the whole uh, concept of wealth makes you the billionaire, kind of, that we are talking about. Uh, I talked about Joseph earlier. When you solve money spending problems, what do you expect? You're rewarded. And if you're rewarded, with what? With wealth. That's the secret. So, as a prophet, you have the potential to multiply your wealth legitimately with your prophetic anointing. I want to give another example, the example of the prophet Elijah. Elijah had got the ability as a prophet to oppose economic growth of a whole nation and to impose it, to play it. That's Elijah. And I'm crying for the grace of Elijah. Lord, I want to be another Elijah. Here. Lord, send another Elijah here to bring the fire. Bring the fire also. Send the rain. That's a song that we sang back then. And it used to be very popular in some parts of Christian circles around the world back then. And I've got the grace of Elijah. I can speak and dead bodies come back to life. I can speak and bury wombs open. I can speak and overdue pregnancies are given back to. I need to be able to know how to use these which are high to control the economy not just in my favor, but in the favor of the kingdom of God. In other words, their prophetic call is such that, like in the case of Elijah, Elijah now, is a calling into a control of a national revival based on revolution. And that cannot happen until you lay your hand on the economy. He had been prophesying crazily, doing some crazy stuff. Nobody believed in him or gave attention to God or repented because of the great acts of the prophet Elijah until he paused the economy. It was here they took him serious. So if you've got the anointing to uh, harness or bring to be or cause a steer or make people catch the wave of the move of God in terms of revival, prophetic revolution or prophetic revival in such a way like, that like Elijah, you're going to bring a lot of souls back into the kingdom of God. Remember how that these men of God turned many back to God on that mountain of Camel in that encounter contest. So, if you're going to do this, then you are going to also engage your prophetic ability to interrupt with the economy. Because the people understand the language of the economy. Once money is flowing, what once world is flowing, they've got freedom and then going to listen to God. But when they notice that as a prophet, you've got a unique power to control wealth, what do they do? they'll naturally give their ears to you. Not because they love God initially, not because they want to be born again, but because they notice that the thing they love so much, money, you have got the power over money. So they want to come close to you so they too can tap into your ability to control money or influence money. 
That's what they're coming close to you for. In the process, you now give them Jesus. When they're coming for money, because of the money that you've got influence over, you now show them the secrets. It's in Jesus that I got this power. And so if you want to get, get this power, you too have to come into Jesus. And that becomes the secret there. The next example here is the man David, and his was a calling into leadership. He was a prophet. At least Apostle Peter referred to David as a prophet. In Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, and verse 29 and 30, Peter referred to David as a prophet. And this David was splendidly rich, a multi billionaire, so that in the first Chronicles chapter 29, verse 3 down, the man had in gold and in silver and in bronze gave for the construction of the house of God out of his love for God, uh, gold and silver worth 6.5 billion US dollars. This was just his offering sown into the kingdom of God. He was a prophet himself. And he was that rich, called into leadership. When God calls you as a prophet into leadership, whether uh, church leadership or secular leadership, you've got the capacity to boost the economy of that organization or the secular, whether religious or secular organization. You've got that capacity. That was exactly what David did with his ability as a prophet and the other talents that God gave to him, he was able to attract wealth. And remember that the man David fought 66 battles, lost none. In each case, before David engaged in any fighting or any battle, he would ask God, shall I go? And then God will give him the permission to do, and David will do. The interest of David was the advancement of the kingdom of God. In the process of advancing the kingdom of God, taking the responsibility of the kingdom of God as a full chest matter, the man won or earned God's favor. He became upright. And the Bible said, among the upright, there is favor. That was in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 9. So, end God's favor. And with God's favor end, wealth began to pursue him. So the man had silver and gold to that tune. His son, Solomon, followed in his steps. And the Bible said in 1 Kings chapter 10 and verse 27 that Solomon made gold and silver, silver in particular, to be in abundance in Jerusalem as if it was nothing in his days because of how much God made him rich. And what was the secret again with Solomon? He was highly prophetic. He could hear God. He could have an encounter with God. He could receive direct instructions from God as to how to lead his people acceptably. Even his own life. God will come to speak with Solomon on how to go about his life. He felt somewhere along the line only when he decided to uh, give a deaf attention to God's uh, corrections or instructions as the man Solomon. So, their prophetic calling anywhere in any age has got the capacity to make you a multi billionaire When God calls you as a prophet, he's calling you to bless you so that you can be a blessing to his people. That's the secret of his calling. You may, in your own case, undertake to be the poor prophets or the prophet that is called into poverty. I don't know. Here I'm talking about these prophets that were called and they are called, open them up to become multi billionaires. And if you check out the reign of these prophets, ranging from Abraham to Joseph and then to Elisha, Elijah and David, you discover that these guys were great evangelists. They were great soul winners. Their prophetic work led to the repentance of many. 
they were able to, in the process of their earthly sojourning, bring a lot of souls into the kingdom of God. And they were wealthy. So as a prophet, if I become righteous and not chase after ill-gotten world, but am able to lean or leverage on my prophetic ability to build my own world, if I can command demons and they respect me, cancer and they respect me, the spirit of death and its response respects me, prosperity will also respect me. To crown it all up, remember that the Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20 uh, to 23, where uh, Jehoshaphat showed up in an elegant way that believe in God, you will be established. Believe in your prophets, you will prosper. Prosperity entails that you are wealthy in health and in money, in assets, you will prosper. Now, if you, as a prophet, people have to believe you before they can prosper. Believing in God will establish them. Believing in their prophets will prosper there. So if they are going to believe in me so they can prosper, then shouldn't I prosper myself? It's just like Mark chapter 16, and verse 15 down when Jesus gave them a great commission and he said, they shall cast out devils. Now, if I am casting out devils, should I be the one carrying demons about? Should I be the one distributing poverty? It's an error for prophets to become poor paupers in the society. Prophets are supposed to be distributors of wealth. Remember again, Christ was hung on the tree that the blessings of Abraham, a prophet, can pass across on us who are Gentiles and not Jews. The Jews, Paul had said that salvation is first for the Jews. You get that. Now, a connection here is that Christ was hung on the tree so that the blessings of Abraham can cross over on us. And if we are prophets, and the blessings of a prophet is going to cross over to us. Then are you the end point? No. You are going to be wealthy, a billionaire, I mean a mortar billionaire, so that you can be a blessing to the kingdom of God. We need to bring in billions of souls into the kingdom of God. That cannot be done unless we are wealthy. Remember that the world isn't going to sponsor the gospel. Prophets must build their own world, their own systems and structures that grow their wealth so that over time you can take out of your abundance to win more souls. Remember that what David gave and Solomon used for the construction of the temple held the people in one accord in the worship of God even after the death of David, when David was long gone. You see that? So... Today, again, God wants to raise great kingdom builders and prophets uh, tools for this. Your calling as a prophetic person or as a prophet or as a prophet makes you or position you to become a billionaire. Receive grace to become one in Jesus' mighty name.